Hello guys, welcome to this guide on how to climb with Hextech Severe. First off, let's look at why you would want to play Severe right now. Severe is very flexible with items, she has an easy and strong early mid game, and she's very strong in the meta right now. Playing Severe is actually playing two comps. The first of these is AD Striker Severe, which utilizes the bonus attack damage from Striker and builds items like Ai, Last Whisper. Meanwhile, AP Sivir utilizes the bonus magic damage that you get from the Hextech shield, usually with the items Rageblade, Shift, and QSS. On the first carousel, you want to go for Bow, that builds into Rageblade and Shift, or you want to go for Glove, that builds into QSS, IE, and Last Whisper. Early game usually revolves around trying to find 4 Hextech units and building your board around those. In this scenario, we already hit the Swain, the Jarvan, the Sejuania Nocturne. Pretty high roll, I'd say. Usually then we go 5 to play a Rek'Sai, which gives us both Bruiser and Striker. At level 6 you have a lot of option, and it's kinda depending on what you hit early game. If you hit a Caitlyn too, that's perfectly fine. You get her in for Enforcer and a bit of backline. You can also play Brand if you hit that, Arcanist. You can also play a Sack if you're lucky enough to hit that guy. And then at 7, you can play 4 Bruisers, which I think is especially good if you have healing reduction in the form of either Morello or Sunfire. Early game, you're most likely carrying Nocturne, with Infinity Edge and Last Whisper working exceptionally well if you have another Assassin on your board. Alternative early game carries could be Twitch or Talon, but if you're lucky enough to hit a 2-star Gnar or a 2-star Senna, these units also work really well with IE Last Whisper. If you hit early AP Sivir items like Rageblade and Shift, you'd rather play Lucian and maybe splash in Twin Shot just to buff him up. Alternatively, if you hit an early Caitlyn, she works very well with Rageblade and Shift, splash in an MF for Sniper, as well as some AoE damage. With frontline items, you have a bit more choices. I usually just stack on the units that I hit. In this case, I hit a 2-star Sejuani, so I just put the frontline items on her. Later in the game, we transfer these items to Alistar. Items like Bramble and Declaw work really well off the Hextech shield, but you can also go for Warmarks plus Redemption for insane healing while the shield is active. So like I mentioned earlier, there's two variations of the Severe comp. One that utilizes AD, and one that utilizes the magic damage that she gets from the Hextech shield. Now for the magic damage variation, you've probably carried Lucian in your early game, and now it's 4-1, and you want to level to 7 and try to make your board stronger. So whether you roll on 7 or 8, these are the core units you're looking for. Items from Lucian are transferred to Severe, while Alistar gets tank items. The reason it's so strong is because that Severe's auto attacks will bounce around targets while her ability is active, proccing the extra magic damage that you get from the Hextech shield while that is active. This scales really well off the Rage Blade and the Shiv as well, which also shreds MR, further increasing her damage. The QSS is on her, so she doesn't get CC'd. And if you have the components for it, you can put Six on Lucian just to buff her attack speed and make that Rage Blade stack even quicker. At level 8, you put in Vi, giving you Bruiser and the option to play 3 Enforcer with a Jace. And that's the board. Now for the AD variant, your transition is gonna look a little bit different. For this variant, you will have been carrying Nocturne for your early game, or maybe Twitch or Talon. The board you're trying to hit now looks like this here. The damage still comes from Severe, but now in the form of physical damage. The Last Whisper is gonna shred the armor of the whole enemy team as her attacks bounces, and the IE scales really well off the extra damage she gets from Striker. Another variant of this comp becomes playable at level 8, where you can play 6 Hextech for Striker. The damage still comes from the Striker, but now you have the 6 Hextech to provide your team with a lot of frontline. Third item on Sevier can be QSS to maximize her damage by her not getting CC'd. You can also use Bloodthirster if you haven't gotten a healing augment. Or you can add in Rageblade, Runans, or Giant Slayer to amp her damage even further. The first decision you have to make is whether you want to pre-level to 4 on stage 1-4. You want to pre-level if you're sitting on a lot of 2-cost pairs, or if you already 2-starred one or more of your 1-cost units. I normally do this in about 1 5th of my games, so if you're in doubt, just wait with leveling to 4 until 2-1, or maybe even wait until 2-2 if you're sitting on a lot of 1-cost pairs and want another round with greater odds of hitting 1-costs. Next you need to decide whether you want to pre-level to 5 into the first carousel. You do this if you're win streaking and or sitting on a lot of 2-cost or maybe even 3-cost pairs, which is not likely, but possible. If you're still sitting on a lot of 1-cost pairs and have the option to make econ, then don't pre-level. Just take the money and the extra odds of hitting 1-costs and level to 5 on 2-5. Five 
You've probably already noticed this, but Econ and TFT is very important and essential if you want to win games. I use 2-6 as a check mark for whether I have good Econ early game. If you can hit 20 gold at 2-6, your Econ is solid. Bear in mind that to do this, you might have to sell 3 cost pairs that you're not gonna play, or even a 4 cost unit that you're not gonna utilize for the next 5 rounds. You always level to 6 on 3-2, and roll if you're win streaking and have pairs, or maybe if you're a one off 4 hex tech, or if you're just looking to make your board stronger. Try not to roll below 20 gold, so you can still keep some econ throughout stage 3. In some games, you might not even have to roll at this point in the game though, because you already hit your units, you already hit a good board, so now you can just econ up throughout stage 3. If you're high rolling super hard, you might want to go level 7 on 3-5. That's only if you have a very strong board, a big win streak, and can do it with 20 gold remaining. If not, you want to go 7 on 4-1 and start rolling for either 6 hextech or 4 strikers. Indicators that you are strong enough is usually that you hit a severe, you have a somewhat upgraded frontline, and or hit the 6 hextech spike. On stage 4-5, I usually level to 8, try to hit my upgrades, and try to hit another unit I can play. Usually it's a Vi, since Vi pairs really well with Sejuani, and Sejuani you always want to play in this comp. From this point in the game, I like to roll aggressively for my upgrades. Meaning, if I'm sitting on a Vi pair, at least our pair, and or severe pair, I will roll to zero every turn until I hit at least two of these upgrades. Once you've upgraded all your forecast units, and most of your board, you can start considering going 9. This you can do on stage 5-5 if you're super high rolling and super rich. Normally you do it on 6-2 or on 6-5. First of all, congratulations, you made it this far into the game, you got good econ, you managed to hit your units, and you transitioned into a mid game board that actually won some fights. Alright, so what do we do now to spike our board? If you're playing the 6 hex deck variant, you should be sitting on a board that looks like this. Most important upgrades to hit are Vi, Sevier, and Alistar. Once you hit those, I usually go 9 and start looking for Silco and Jace. Depending on the items you get, you can either go for frontline Jace for extra tanginess, or backline chase for even more DPS and attack speed. From here, you can swap out Lucian and Swain for stronger units like Vi, Renata, or Tom Kench. Selko is broken in general, but even more so in this comp, because when you put him behind Jarvan and Sivir, Jarvan instantly pops his flag while Sivir gains attack speed, and the fight is over in seconds. Another great win condition for this board is playing 8 Hextech, but bear in mind that you need a Hextech emblem in order to play this. Now if you ended up going for the AD Striker variant, at stage 5 your board looks something like this. Late game you want to get in Vi, maybe start stacking items on Aurelia, who pops off with QSS, BT and a damage item. Silco is insane here too, and you just always want to play this unit when you hit him. If you manage to find a Striker emblem, 6 Strikers is a decent win condition as well. For the last part of this video, I want to go over which augments that work well when playing Severe. Let's start off with the S tier. These are pick on sight and easy to form material. First off we have fa Phalanx? 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 Phalanx and Makeshift gives your team armor and MR, which scales insanely well off the Hextech shield. Backfoot works really well on Severe, but also on your whole team. Bear in mind that your whole team can proc the extra damage from the Hextech shield. More attack speed for your whole team is just a lot more damage. Hextech and Striker augments are insane for both early, mid and late game, and also opens up the late game win conditions of 6 Striker or 8 Hextech. Disintegrator procs on the whole enemy board when Sivir activates her ulti. The same applies to Weak Spot, which applies anti-heal and buffs her AD damage, working especially well off the Striker buff. Celestial Blessing is great because it heals the whole team while the Hextech shield is active. Since you're not always guaranteed to hit perfect augments, here's a list of augments that are just generally good on Severe. Pandora's is great. You basically get to pick your own items. You just need to reroll the components that you don't have any use for. Tome is good. A bit of a gamble, but you can usually hit something useful. Calculated loss is insane, especially if you want to lose streak and get amazing econ early. Meanwhile, we have cybernetic implants, cybernetic shell and uplink. These are also generally good, just remember to split your leftover components on other units. Item Grab, Portable Forge and Treasure Trove. There's not too much to say about these, 
These are just generally good. Alright, that concludes the video. Thank you guys so much for watching and let me know in the comments what comp you would like to see a guide on next. And remember to leave a like and subscribe if you found this video helpful. Alright, see you in the next one.